Lifestyle with your host, Adelita Norman. Happy, happy Saturday, everyone, and good afternoon. Again, welcome to Fashion, Flair, and Lifestyle. Fashion, a popular trend in styles of dress. Flair, a special or instinctive aptitude or ability for doing something well. Lifestyle, the way in which a person or a group lives. Lifestyle is expressed in both work, leisure behavior, patterns, activities, attitudes, and interests. It also reflects people's self-image or self-concept, the way they are seen by themselves and believe they are seen by others. So again, happy Saturday and welcome to Fashion Flair and Lifestyle. And I'm your host, Osnita Norman. What's going on, everybody? I know, right? I'm happy to be here on this Saturday afternoon. Um, Our topic for today is fashionably correct. Does it still exist? Hmm, good question. And I have my reasons for that, um, that topic, which we will share later on. However, how are you doing today, Glenn? I am very well. How about you, Nate? I'm doing well. Yeah. What it took me a while to uh, wake up today. You got them. You got a bunch of curls in the front of your head. <laughs> I know. My curls popping. That's what they was telling me last it's week. Popping, huh? That's what they told me last week. Well, I guess they pop. And if I, um, you know, they was popping. So, um, again, I um, want to start off today with um, a known history fact. And this is something I just kind of stumbled across. So um, what I want to talk about today, some may be interested, some may not, but I think most women would be interested in this uh, find of mine. The women, mostly this particular woman uh, was the first African-American black woman to have five patents, okay? Um, most, a lot of times, women or people in general that are inventors or creatives, they're forgotten about. So the forgotten woman, an inventor who I want to talk about today, her name is Mary Beatrice Davidson Kenner. She was born in 1912 and passed in 2006. But she was a self-taught inventor who created the sanitary belt. The sanitary belt? The sanitary belt that they used for menstrual uh, pads. Oh, wow. And it also, um, in regards to like the moisture and the lock-in and all of that stuff. So, um, she was born in Charlotte, North Carolina. At age six, she attempted to invent a self-oiling door because um, she said every time her mom, well, she didn't say, but in the article it stated, every time her mother would get up to get dressed for work, the door was squeezed. Every time her mother would get up to go to work, the door was squeaking, it would wake her up. But um, she hurt her hand trying, so she dropped that idea, but she never forgot about it. Fast forward, she graduated high school, and she earned a prestigious um, place in college at Howard University. But for financial reasons, she ended up dropping out. And she saved her money to have the sanitary belt patent. Um, And that was at the time that women were still using cloth pads and rags during their cycle. So the base, um, what she was trying to do was stop the women from bleeding through their clothing. You know, because back in the day, uh, women would stay in the house when they had their menstrual cycle based on the flow of the blood. Wow, they would stay in the house. They would stay in because they didn't have nothing to absorb the blood. Like they used towel, old rags and stuff like that. So they couldn't go out in public because, of course, it would possibly seep through their clothing. So, hmm. so she, um, it said, Kenner proposed an adjustable, an adjustable belt with an in-belt moisture-proof napkin pocket, making it less possible for leaks. So a company in Washington um, contacted her about her new idea, and they were interested in marketing her idea. And once they found out that she was black... They didn't want to. Uh, they didn't want to patent it for. Her. And then, um, once the disposable pads were made, believe it or not, they were not even made for women. 
They were made for wounded soldiers to bandage up their wounds. Well, you know, that's just, that shows you how women have been discriminated against for many, yeah. many years. And, and the bandages go all the way back to like Benjamin Franklin Day. So like the early, like the late 1800s. Wow. Yeah. But this. Um, that is an interesting piece of information. But Mary, there. she went on to have, um, like I said, five different patents. Um, was the, Another thing was a tissue holder that we currently use today. And it was to make the tissue go a certain way. I don't know exactly which one it was that she, that she patented, mm -hmm. but it was a um, tissue holder, um, a serving tray and pocket attached to a frame because her sister had multiple sclerosis mm -hmm. and she created or invented the top tray and the side pocket. Wow. For the frame, attached to the frame. And then she also um, patented a back washer attached that you attach to the wall of a shower to help you clean hard to reach parts of your back so you know Christ right. sucks it to the wall you probably just you know move your shoulders up and down like that <laughs> i was on to the side wow the side. yeah yep so that was my like uh little known history fact that i found out good i one. was excited that was good no that <laughs> I was really like i never knew this and it's like um, things that we use on a consistent basis. You know, it's like sometimes you never think, like, where did this come from? Because we take some, we tend to take so many things for granted. So many. Yeah. I mean, it's something as easy as who created this, the microphone. Yeah. You know, DJs use them all the time. Speakers use them all the time. People use them every single day. Yeah. And, you know, never really have to think like, hmm, who, who, who thought of this and why? Yep. But just to think the sanitary napkins was for um, wounded soldiers. Well, I know why men don't think of when they, when they was created. Yeah, y'all probably don't want to even we don't give a attempt damn. to think about it. Why not? Well, why not? Because we don't even want y'all to be able to have to <laughs> use them. I know. That's like, uh, not horrible, but it's like, that was the, the backlash that we got back in the day. Doing what she did. Yeah. So they say, you know. I so don't. let me get this in so you won't have to. We are now broadcasting. You can get the show on Twitch. Okay? So if you have a Twitch account and you want to watch the show, you want to watch Fashion Flair and Lifestyles, you can go over there and uh, catch the show over there as well. And Glenn is Titch T W I. Twitch. T W I, yes. P C H. Okay. It's like Twitch Twitch. Yes. And uh you know it works just like YouTube. And uh it's actually it's twitch dot TV slash vent radio. That's the web address. Twitch slash vent radio. Yes. And you know as always you can get our broadcast on our official site, www.ventradio.net. So All right. Well, that's my little history fact. And, of course, I cannot... Your little history fact. Yeah, my history fact. I learned something. You know, what's the purpose of living if you don't learn every day? This is true. You know? This people is true. Don't. I aim to learn something that I didn't know the day before. Good. Yep. So, of course, I can't um, get into anything else without talking about our fallen uh, basketball star. Kobe Bryant and his daughter G yes. Gianna Bryant and, the and also yeah. the nine others I have their names too that I do want to mention um, so let me mention everyone because it's a it's tragic for everyone it is now is the time for you guys to hit that share button and don't be selfish don't cost you a dime hit that That's share right. button and share it with your friends so they can get a chance to uh, experience Fashion, flair, and, and lifestyle. Yep, okay. So we, we have, um, we just say, you know, a prayer for the Bryant family due to Kobe Bryant being deceased, his daughter Gianna, and the other people that were on the plane, which is John Antib Altabelli and his wife Carrie Altabelli. Their daughter Alyssa Altabelli was wow. 14. Um, Christina Mauser, she leaves behind her husband and three children. Wow. Um, Sarah Chester and her daughter Peyton. 
Esther. And Peyton was 13. So three children. And that is, it's just tragic. I, I really feel just bad. You yes. know, and not so much, even if I could take the, um, the stardom away from him or to be in the, the great, a great basketball player, I still would feel the same way. Yes. As if I, you know, if it happened to somebody that I didn't know what, right in my, um, in my city or in the state, because that's, it's tragic losing someone, um, especially abruptly, and it, it's, it's devastating. Yes. Yep, so. You no, know, they had a, um, a beautiful ceremony for him at uh, Staples Center. Yeah, tribute. before the game started. Yeah. yeah, I heard Usher sing, and I, um, I had a chance to listen to LeBron's speech. And it was just, you know, I was just looking around. It's like, wow, people, you know, the uh, one reporter who brought up, you know, the rape allegations that was against him many, many years ago. Yes, that he was acquitted of. That he was acquitted of. Why would you, you know, bring that up? And his wife, his family, his friends, every the world is mourning. That's like, what, really? That's what, that's what those people do. I'm just like, okay, don't nobody, nobody's even thinking about that. I'm sure the person that accused him, she's probably not even thinking about that. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes things happen, people forgive, people move on. You know, I, we don't know. But let's, I uh, just. Let's hear a clip from the, uh, the tribute. Emotional scene overnight inside the house that Kobe built. The Lakers playing their first game at L.A.'s Staples Center since the death of Kobe Bryant, his daughter, and seven others in that helicopter crash. ABC Zachary Keish right there this morning covering it all. Zachary, good morning to you. Dan, good morning to you as well. Emotions were raw here at the Staples Center last night, and yet there was something so therapeutic about it. The house that Kobe built, wearing that purple and gold for 20 years and wearing it so well. You know, it's been said that our fascination with sports isn't so much about the game, it's about the stories. Kobe Bryant had an incredible story. For all the joy he brought fans as a player. The first game since the death of Kobe Bryant, his daughter Gianna and seven others came with heavy hearts. His name was stamped on this court long before his shocking death. Draped in purple and gold, the Laker nation coming together to honor the life and legacy of a legend. Amazing Usher and Ben Hong began the emotional night with a moving tribute. Then LeBron James fighting back tears and the home. made a passionate speech, reminding the crowd that the night wasn't only about grieving. Tonight we celebrate the kid that came here at 18 years of age, <laughs> retired at 38, and became probably the best dad that we've seen over the last three years, man. So in the words of Kobe Bryant, Mamba out, but in the words of us, not forgotten. Live on, brother. I I like that. Yeah, I thought it was a fitting tribute. To, yeah, uh, it really was. You know, you know when he while he was alive and playing, you know, I thought that in a in many instances, uh, he was shunned because he wanted to be great, great, and. You know, people, because he didn't have that hood, so-called hood, hood mentality, mm -hmm. people. I don't, they probably couldn't just accept him for being who he was. And a lot of times when you're not extra, you know what I'm saying? Kobe wasn't, he would do, play the game, do his press conference, and he pretty and much would be on his way. Yeah. You didn't see him here and there a whole lot. And people will think sometimes that, oh, he acted funny or he think he too good. That just wasn't him. Yeah. He played basketball because he loved the game, yeah, not yeah. for everything that came with it. I'm sure was a uh, was happiness to his heart and glee to achieve some of those things. But he loved the game. Yeah, he loved, he loved it. the game. And you know, it, it, I used to hear people. You know, he well, he don't fraternize with the rest of the players in the league the way. Well, you know, people are entitled to be who they are. And and we have to learn it. You know, it's like even they even the little kids, you know, well 
he speaks all of those languages and that's a great thing uh, yeah um i was listening to um someone said that he moved over here when he was like 16 mm -hmm. came, yeah I, he, he lived in italy for italy. like yeah his father played basketball in Italy. right right and uh he was very fluent in in nine different languages yeah, because you would hear him speak all the time. And I, I remember one of the um, surviving spouses of one of the ladies uh, that were was killed in an accident. She, he, um, he said, he, you know, of course he's hurting. He said, but he know why Kobe picked his wife. He picked her because I thought she was awesome and great at what it is that she did as far as coaching the basketball team. And he said he he did not want to take her dream away from her. Like who mm. would, you know what I'm saying? Like who would ultimately be side by side working with Kobe Bryant? Right. He's like, so he just supported her and her dream and he know how much she loved doing what she did. Mm. So my point is I keep hearing um, people saying that life is short, life is short. And when I thought about it, I said life is not short. As to me, it's all about the time and what we do with it while we are here on earth. And it's, it's how you, what are you using as a measuring stick? Exactly. Be Be because people say to us, his life was short lived, you know, because of his age. Say he, because they, he's 41. I well, say he had a great life. I feel the same way. Like I said, to us, he lived a short life because in our sight, he was young. But he had impacted so many people through his generosity and his talent that he did live a long life because his legacy is so long. Think about how many generations are affected by his death. Well, if we, if we just, if we stop to think intelli intelligently, you know, that's just a saying. Mm -hmm. Gone too soon, lived a short life. Right. Every life is a full life. Yeah. Because just as we are born, there's a day to be born, and there's a date to die. You have an expiration date. We just don't we know, just when, don't know when it is. When and how. Yes. We don't so, know. So, you know, I, don't, I, I think he had a beautiful life. I think so, too. He's, For... he's, he's traveled the entire world. He's been financially secure since a teenager. Yeah. He has built enormous wealth for his family and family's family. Mm-hmm. Friends. And you know, think about um I was reading where Carmelo Anthony couldn't even play on Friday because yes. he was so impacted by it. And like you said, a lot of times people think but because you don't see him on T V dapping it up with this player, that player, that player. They a lot of them have really, really, really good friendships yes. outside of basketball. Yeah, because they get to the point where they understand that see we basketball and any other sport is a form of entertainment. Correct. And we lift these people up to make them different than the normal person. You, you know what I'm saying? They just do their job on a higher plane. Right. But they have a job to do. They do. And they, and they do it to the best of their ability. Some yeah. people love them. Some people don't. I just say that he was, he was from humble beginnings. And listening to a video, in a video, of course, you always have doubters, no matter how great or how ungreat you are. He said in the video that he had one of his teachers to say that he shouldn't, um, that he shouldn't play basketball, that he, he should try something else. And then that comment um, that the teacher made to him, he didn't say like, um, Kobe didn't say what grade or whatever. But he said that made him try harder at being the best. So every time someone told him that he couldn't, he always wanted to um, give them a different look because he was always going to succeed at what someone thought he couldn't succeed at. So again, thanks to Kobe Bryant for everything that he's uh, given to the bat, um, uh, entire world along with the Lakers, Lakers organization in basketball. And may him and his daughter and the um, other survivors, um, not survivors, but deceased, uh, rest in peace. So that was my Kobe tribute today. And I'm, I'm deeply bothered by it as if I knew him, but I didn't. But I just know how it feels to lose someone that you love. And for his wife, I can't imagine, um, you know, one, she has an empty bed. Two, she has an empty bedroom. And that's two, that's like a double whammy. So that's very, um, 
devastating and disturbing. But, you know, hopefully with time and um, grief counseling, she and her other daughters and their family and the other families will be able to take it day by day because there's no expiration date time on grieving someone that you love. And then back to, um, we're going to get back to fashion. Fashion fact. New York Fashion Week starts February 6th through February the 9th. And guess what I did not do? I didn't look up to see who were um, going to be a lot of designers in the fashion show. But it'll probably be your basics. So I'll bring that information back once I get specifics. So in the wake of Kobe's death, there always... Look, also was the Grammys that happened on Sunday night. I didn't watch the Grammys. I didn't either. I haven't watched the Grammys in years. Just I just don't watch it anymore. But um, what I did pay attention to was a lot of the Grammys and the best dressed in the, I call them clown outfits. Yes. Because some of the um, clothing attire selected was beautiful. Like Lizzo, she looked pretty on the red carpet. Um, but then there were also some outfits that I really don't consider. I mean, it is fashion and it is style because that's something that you choose to wear and that you're comfortable in. But Billy Porter had on a remote control lampshade hat along with makeup and uh, some fitted his whole outfit was sequenced, turquoise and silver. I didn't think that that was fashion. Did you see it, Glenn? I saw some of the reports and some of the clips from uh, that. I mean, you know, it's just I don't want to give off an air that, that I'm homophobic in any kind of way because I'm not. But... Are we just, are we going too far with <laughs> these looks? I mean, it's, it's just, it's just incredible. I think that's a, that, I think that's probably my main, you know, I, I, how can I put it? There are people who still have children to raise, you know, and sometimes everything that's put in front of a child is not very easily explained. You know, yes. so I understand us as adults, sometimes it's things that or choices people make that we don't always understand. But then you also have to remember that these are children looking too, and they, you know, they're five, six years old, impressionable, you know, their choice, but nothing that I would have um, chosen to wear. Yes. Uh... And who, oh, Little Nas X. I didn't like his outfit either. He had on a hot pink it looks leather uh outfit hat jacket pants boots hot pink yeah it was uh that was very um i did not like it um usher his outfit looked like <laughs> he looked like my grandma going to the grocery store she didn't grab her sequence jacket her slide and her <laughs> scarf <laughs> So you, you pretty much didn't like any of the fashion. I like Lizzo's fashion. She looked pretty. Um, a lot of the artists, um, this lady named Camila Cabello, her out, her dress was pretty. Uh, some of them just had like uh, plain, like regular looks, and then some were over the top. Ella May, she had on Giorgio Armani, a red dress, really beautiful. Let me let me Clean. ask you a question, Nita. Yes. And and don't take this the wrong way. I, I just want to hear it from a woman's perspective. Okay. Do you find it offensive for men to dress up in, in women's clothing and uh, try to portray themselves as women? I, myself, I wouldn't... In a nice way, I would not judge a person mm -hmm. based on what their choices were for their own personal reasons. I don't like it. 
-hmm. You know, I wouldn't, I would not want, I don't like it. Based on having a son, you know what I'm saying? I, I, I think I, I'm going to put it all back to having children and yeah. having to explain certain things to them that they don't understand all the time. You know, sometimes, you know, children gravitate to who they look up to. Right. So I don't, I, I don't like it. I don't like it mainly because of the influence that it could have on a person that may not be ready for explanation of why that person is dressed like that. They may not get it that it's just fashion. So do you think that that guy, I don't even know his name, the guy with the lampshade hat on. Billy Porter. Billy Porter. Do you think that he was, that he should have been picked as the host of the Grammys? Do you, do you have a problem with the, uh, him being the host? I, you know what, Glenn? It doesn't bother me who they select to be the host of it if it's something that I don't agree with. I just won't watch it. I just won't tune in. Rather than the judge and ridicule for something, an uh, understanding I may not have, I just won't watch it. But I didn't know he was hosting. I thought it was just Alicia Key. Yeah, I didn't know. Uh... But his outfit was bad, though. <laughs> yeah, real bad. I just don't see why he dressed. He always wears... um. Uh, women, woman attire. Cause he went a couple years ago, maybe two years ago, he had on a dress. Yeah, he's worn different. Yeah, outfits. some kind of tuxedo dress. Yeah, something like that. I think it was like tuxedo at the top and then tutu or long something at the bottom. It wasn't no tutu. It was like a had a a tail. I mean a what a do you train. Call, a train. Yeah, 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 yeah. I remember. Like I said, to each his own. I just don't like it. I'm not gonna judge you based on that. That's your preference. You know, it's like when I get dressed, I dress based on how I feel, what I want to wear. I never wake up feeling like I want to put on men's clothes. So for someone who wake up and feel like they want to dress like a lady today, I can't. Um, well, you're not homosexual for one thing. But so. I'm just saying, so I don't, I don't understand. I mean, I don't have a prob the pro I don't have a problem with people being homosexual if that's what, what they are. Right. But... Do we, even with, with that being said, do men have to show up at the Grammys with a dress on? I think they do. They dress flamboyant, and, and it, this go for men and women. It's, okay, the purpose of, like, the red carpets is for the designers. Think about it. When the, when the, are, when the person walk on the red carpet, they say, who or what are you wearing? Who are right. you wearing? Right. You name drop Georgia Armani. I'm wearing Chanel. I'm wearing Karl Lagerfeld. So the designers come with designs that stand out for their brands. Yes. Now, who they choose to wear them, I don't know how that go. But it's more of a branding, marketing thing for designers and um, the artists. Or if, you know, it's not always artists or producers or whomever that does the... Um, the stuff for the Grammys, you know, the receipt award. So that's the producers, the artists, engineers, and all of those people. Mm. Yeah. Uh, I mean, there was some other really nice outfits. Gwen Stefani and Blake uh, Shelton looked nice. Um, John Legend, he had on a suit, but one side of his suit jacket was longer than the other. You know, that's actually a fashion trend right now for in men's fashion. It looked, uh, it almost looked like a, a kilt on one side with mm -hmm. the pleats. Eh, I don't know. I really don't know. Uh, Tyler, the creator, had on baby pink. So like I said, it's all for branding and marketing to me. So just because what they wear doesn't always define them. But sometimes what they wear get them the notoriety and attention. That they I get it. For their career. That's how I feel. I get it. That's what that is. Let's see what else I got going on today. Oh, and then it was someone who um, had on a dress, a sequenced red, blue, and white dress that said Trump 2020. But I don't know. I couldn't find a lady. I didn't. Really? Yeah. Yep. I'm, I'm kind of scrolling through my pictures to see. Yeah. 
Well, I guess, you know, people, people have the right to vote for whoever they so choose to. Oh, I didn't know Quavo and Saweetie went together. It was an item. I don't even know who the hell them people are. <laughs> Quavo from the, from the Migos. Oh. Offset and all of them. His, okay. his home. Oh, you know who that my. is? Uh, did you see Wild and Out? Do you watch Wild and Out Green? Every now and again. <laughs> um, did you I don't see? think that... I just don't really find it all that funny. But did you see when Black China got mad? Yeah, yeah, I did see that clip. <laughs> I just saw her. I'm rolling through my pictures looking for the lady had on a Trump dress, and it just died. I just cracked me up because she really got mad. Like she, her feelings was kind of hurt. Let's see you. Uh, let's see if we can find that. Yeah, I'm trying to think because this particular feed has everyone. Charlie Wilson was even at the Grammys. Everybody was, except me. And you know, uh, Puffy gave a, oh yeah, a, yeah, a uh, speech, and uh, saying that the the Grammys had one year to uh, one year to yeah. diversify it. Yeah, but you know, my thing is this: kudos for him, you know, standing up and and saying something. Right, but. How long are we going to beg white folks to recognize us when you guys can get together and get some sponsorship if you need to and do your own version of, of the Grammys and recognize yourselves? Isn't that where the BET Awards started? Because BET Awards, has they been out maybe 20 years? Oh, more than 20 really? years. Really? Yeah. Yeah, Let me more see. than twenty. Maybe years. I didn't have cable back in back then. Let's see. But you know, my thing is, you know, Puffy has a television network, Revolt. Nas owns. Uh, he's the majority owner in Pluto TV. Glenn, BET launched um, in February two thousand eight. No, that's probably. Let me see. That's that was the Hip Hop Awards. Yeah. Oh, so the BET Awards were established in 2001. Weird. So that's. Weird. Yeah. That's basically, almost 20 years. Basically 20 years. I thought maybe, I thought you were talking about the network. Itself. Oh, no, I know that was like. Yeah. A long t- in the 60s, 70s. Maybe when Bob Johnson. Here is a, here's a clip of uh, Black China on. Uh, while and oh really <laughs> she got oh, so I, mad i thought it was anyway she got so mad so me talking about the grammys in the grammys fashion that's what brings me to my topic of um fashionably correct does it still exist well you want to uh before you go into that oh. segment you want to hit the black china yes. go ahead <laughs> oh goodness why the hell they sent me right in front of Mike? That's Christy T. I wonder, can he tell this Brazilian starting to itch? God damn. Oh my God. I cannot. Uh, okay, and I'm just finna scratch because this is just too much. And it's itching so much. Oh my God, it's itching. Where's Black China? I don't know. That was Christy Teigen, but that was funny. She's funny to me. Sorry, Your Honor. Get him, cuz! Get him! Too, too busy winning. Oh, that's with there. Nelly. They still ain't show up like China. Okay. Yeah, oh, well. but the clip was funny. She would, The look on her face was like, that's not funny. Maybe it's further into it. I don't remember. It was a recent episode within the last couple of weeks. Yeah, I saw a clip of it. Uh, they showed it. You know, they were saying how pissed off she was. But how do you go on a show like Wild and Out? And, and then, don't expect to be capped on. Right. I don't know. But again, um, every listeners, you can call in 248-429-7224 if you want to chime in on a topic, have any questions, you know, just want to kick it with us for a few minutes, please do call in. Yes, you can. But I think um, fashionably correct still exists. Um, but I think that fashion and having style is different. And I don't think that everybody looks at it as being different. People just think fashion is fashion and style just don't fit nowhere in it almost. Because all you hear is fashion trends, fashion is fashion that. So um, last week I 
went to a birthday party to one of my friend's birthday parties. And for some reason, I bought this, uh, not for some reason, but I bought this black sequence top that I just fell in love with in the store. And my purpose for buying the top was to wear with some white pants, right? So you know that typically the norm or her society, you don't wear white before Labor Day or you don't wear white after Labor Day. You heard that before, Glenn? Yeah, I've heard it, but I... I don't know. I, I, I always, I'm not, I don't really like white. I've heard it, but I've never understood it. Yeah, I wear a white button up, but just to wear like all white, is, white is not one of my favorite colors. However, I bought this top just to wear with some white pants. And that's what I did on um, Saturday night. And I felt so liberated. <laughs> so I did what was usually considered a fashionable, um, a fashion, uh, the ultimate no-no in fashion years ago. I wore white jeans, white pants after Labor Day. <laughs> Boy, you're a class. real, you're a real risk taker. Really, I know. That's like, <laughs> um, yeah. I mean, I was happy about it, and I put the outfit. It really went went well together. So, um, but do you have any like fashion no nos, or do you just dress based on style and not fat? What's fashionable? What's well, trendy? No, I don't. I don't dress based on. Uh, was trending or style. I have been dressing the same way since I was able to afford my own clothes. And uh, it basically does not change. Okay. Uh, I try to buy timeless pieces. Right. And, uh, you know, just like with the, the fitted suit look. Mm -hmm. I just, I don't like it. You don't even own one? I may have one or two. Okay. But they would be the last thing that I would pick. And then depending on where I'm going. That's what I was about to say. I think that's why when I, when I say fashionably correct, I think it's like a time and a place. Like now, just think when people, um, not to say it's wrong, and this is just my opinion, and maybe because I was raised in church, um, and I, I'm not, I guess church etiquette for me, and not to, um, you know, not putting my beliefs off on anyone else, but I don't believe in wearing pants to church. And that's just how I, I was raised. That when you go to church, you wear a dress, you wear a skirt. Not to say that that's wrong, but I just feel like if I have a dress to wear, I'm going to wear a dress. If I don't have nothing else to wear but my shorts or a pair of pants, then that's what I'm going to wear. I like them hurt. ladies that wear move something dresses to church. <laughs> the ones that just came from the club. <laughs> yeah. Them the church sisters I like. I mean, to each his own. Every like I said, everybody is different. I just choose not. And my one friend, um, she'll quick to be like, "Oh, if your mother see me in this pantsuit, time when I was going to speak, she'd have a fit." <laughs> wow. Yeah, but I just really believe in wearing. I wear skirts and dresses to church. That's just. That's well, you know, is. traditionally we, you know, we generally do the things that we are raised to do. Yeah. You, you know what I'm saying? True. And that is true. I think even with with fashion, you know what I mean? You know, you you may, you may be inspired by the way that your mother dressed. You, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And you may you may not. Right. My so, mom strictly wanted to wear denim skirts and T-shirts. <laughs> Like she always wore skirts. She she liked to dress up when she had to, but most of the time she was just regular, be casual, you know, real casual. But she just didn't believe in buying cheap stuff. But she just had her own style, and it didn't matter what nobody else had on. She'd be comfortable in her blue jean skirt. She tried to come to her seventy fifth birthday party in a blue jean skirt. <laughs> you know, my biggest thing with with fashion is when people are wearing things that either doesn't suit their body size, you know, their body right. shape and size, and they think, you know, just because it's hot, well, I'm going to do it too. And, yeah. you know, designers have, when, when designers make clothing, they're making it for a specific 
type of person in mind. Yeah. 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 Because that's that's what that, makes them designers. If not, it would it would fit everybody. It would make everything with a stretch waist and a long neck to pull it out. Exactly. Based on size. Yeah. I I don't know. I, I it it like Saturday when I was out. I wish I could have had like a a fashion microphone or something, so mm -hmm. I could have just talked to these people and say what inspired this outfit today. Well, you should do that. This young lady, her full booty cheeks was out. Had on some shorts. Where was y'all at? Um, we were at the um, MRCC. It's a banquet hall on Mound. Now, oh, somebody else I know went to that. Yeah, had a birthday party. Was a good booty cheeks. <laughs> One of my, somebody I was sitting next to <laughs> said her booty, she didn't even got good booty cheeks. <laughs> <laughs> See, if they wasn't good booty cheeks, then that's... What's that's, good booty cheeks? You know. Is it like firm or something? Firm, you know. Ain't got a bunch of, you know, look Devils. like it's been shot with a shotgun <laughs> with buckshot. I mean, and she was walking around very confident, you know, in her, with all of her cheeks hanging out. I couldn't do that. It don't matter if I was a size two. So what's the furthest that you've been in your life concerning fashion? What's the furthest that, that would, that would you say you, you stepped out? Have, have you ever wore a mini skirt? I, uh, now, I love to wear dresses. So you, if I'm going out part, I do wear short dresses. You do wear short I dresses. I do, I wear a dress that's shorter, that's to the length of if I can still bend over. I'm not going to wear a dress, nothing fitted, nothing loose that I got to constantly pull down because when I walk, it's rising up. That don't sound like fun. It's probably not fun, but for me, I don't want to walk. You ever see women walk and they got on something real short and they keep pulling it down? Yeah. Oops. Yeah. So what's the purpose of wearing it if you got to keep pulling it down? Well, you know, I, I don't know, but. I remember one time I tried to wear it's this. It's interesting to watch. I know men like it, but if that was there, would you allow, not allow, but if you're. A woman was going out and she had on whether you married relationship somebody you kicking it with but it's somebody you enter yeah I have a relationship you in a relationship with this person and if she's going out with her friends would you be okay with her going out and her booty hanging out yeah I would be okay with that if that's what she wanted to do and that's what she wanted for herself I can anything that you want for yourself I can stand it. So what because you, it ain't my booty hanging out. So if she said, babe, how this look? What would your honest opinion be? Baby, your ass is showing. No, it ain't. Okay, then. I'll see you later. You should have followed up with, okay, you're going to get something you don't want. <laughs> no, because if you're going out like that, you should already know that you're going to, to attract, attract something but that what, you may not want. What about the women who get upset when they are provocatively dressed? They get upset because men, you know, because, talk at them. Because they are really not upset. Oh, okay. They are pretending to be upset. Okay. I mean, if you're going out dressed provocatively then you you already know that you're going out with doing something that's abnormal that's going to cause a certain type of attention i remember one time i tried to wear these daisy dukes me and my friends was going to maxi's mm -hmm. maxi's yeah that's the club and my best friend you old as hell <laughs> i know right <laughs> My best friend, we went to, I want to say Contempo and got these outfits. So they were uh, too short. They were denim and then they had like the checkered little fringe around the bottom of them and the shirt tied up. It was a short sleeve, like a little bit of your stomach might be showing, but they were really, really short. So, of course, I put the shorts on and my mother says, where you going with them shorts on? Your booty hanging out. I'm like, Ma, no, it's not. So I kept trying to pull them down. She said, you got to keep pulling that up. That mean they too short. Go buy some bikers. So I had to go and buy me a, a, a pair of biker shorts to go to into my shorts. Her. She would not allow me. So the right, the thing that I could have did, I thought was, when I got to the club, I could have really took them off. 
But I wasn't really comfortable in the club, so I, <laughs> I kept them on. It was so many people in there. And I had been dying to go because I worked afternoons, and I, my friends, either they worked or didn't work, but they went every week. So I was on vacation. So I had been dying, dying, dying to hang out with them. And when I went, it wasn't even really all that, and I never went back in. I never put the outfit on again either. <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny. But um yeah, so I what I'm interested in doing, I did a uh um a seminar back in July and it was called Love the Skin You're In and that's what I was talking about is being able to dress for your shape and for your size. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people don't know how to dress for their shape and size. Like me, I dress for my shape and I dress for my size. Who taught to you me. to do that? Um, I, w I would say maybe it comes from my, you know, siblings, mother. But I think me overall not wanting to show certain parts of my body. You know, like after having a baby, I had uh, my stomach was bigger than what it used to be before I had my baby. Yeah. So I opted out not wearing certain type of tops that would show my stomach fat. Okay. So I would wear something that is a little more flowy, mm -hmm. uh, something not as fitted to show all of my extra, my muffin top and my biscuits in the back. <laughs> biscuits, <laughs> biscuits in the back. Okay. Right. So, um, okay, so we'll go. If you are a woman and you are have a, a bigger midsection, instead of trying to tuck your shirt in like you did when you had a flat stomach, now you got a stomach. I hate to see you with a stomach and then you got a belt on and your shirt tucked in and then everybody see all of that. I don't want to look like that. So my alternative to would be to wear a, a shirt. Um, maybe if I wanted to wear the fitted shirt, I would layer it with um, a layered, uh, not a vest, but like a vest, a denim jacket, something to kind of take the, the picture, not the picture. But something to take the um, shine off of the attributes I don't want you to look at, to focus on. Like you may, you might want to, you know, have on the fitted top for your boobs, but then you have something to kind of camouflage that stomach that you don't want nobody to see. So I just believe if you have like a, a, a bigger midsection, would you put on a little flowy top or a vest or something to cover that to keep that looking in a certain way. So. But what about these women that I see now that no matter, I mean, and, and it just seems to me that if a woman has a big butt now, it doesn't matter how big her stomach is. So they'll, they'll, they'll let the stomach show just so you can see the butt. Yeah, but then you have some women who, like when I go out, I've seen them have on their stretch pants, and they pull the stretch pants up. In the front. In the front, like like the mom jeans, but it still be big, and then they'll have like their midriff out. Right. So. But I I think it if if the if what if their shape is not stopping them from getting attention from the men that they want. Then I guess they don't. If nobody ever told them that they look horrible, they may not think they look bad. I think they think they they horrible and just say to hell with it. I don't know. I mean, I always want to feel whatever I put on. I always want to feel comfortable in it. If I have, most of the time I have options. But if it's something last minute, then I don't have that option. But the the thing about having style is learning your style, learning what looks right on you for your shape and your size that match your personality sometimes for the day and maybe you know but long term but everybody just think fashion and style go hand in hand but you can love fashion have no style and then it's just like you have on an article of clothing it's like a person who will go just into the gucci store and they'll just be gucci from head to toe well that's just fashion that's fashionably trending you got on the latest and the greatest but you didn't put no style with it. So you may not need the hat, the scarf, the jacket, and all of I've that. I've seen people with Gucci everything and still look terrible. Exactly, because they have no style. 
they know that I'm supposed to have nice things. They know that I'm supposed to, if I want to achieve a certain look, sometimes I might have to pay um, a higher dollar for certain things, but they have no style. So they go in and just, um, just what, what I call it, ah, I can't think of what I always say. Uh, what do I call people? I can't think of it, but you know that they feel like they just got to have everything on branded. Horribly branded. <laughs> You know, so you don't have to put all of that on together. Horribly branded. Oh, Glenn, guess what we forgot to talk about? What? Not you, me. The Super Bowl. The what? The Super Bowl. Who playing? Who paying attention to that? I seen people. You got a team. Do you watch football? My team is out, so I don't give a damn. I don't really. I don't watch. I mean, I like football. I like all sports, but I'm just not a diehard fan of any of them. I just watch them. You know, I'm just, I'm not a... Uh, the fan that I used to be of football, mm -hmm. um, because I have learned so much about the serious injuries. Oh, the sport of it. That it causes to people. Yeah. So I'm just, you know, I didn't let any of my boys play football. I was scared. I was glad my son didn't act. Very, very. Not scared, you but know, you know. And if you watch that documentary, uh, that's what's, the Aaron Hernandez. The, yeah, Aaron Hernandez. And, you see how messed up this boy was mentally. And, you know, after studying his brain, they said that he had the worst case of that brain. I don't want to call the name because I'm not sure of it. The, oh, the injury that they start. Didn't they start testing? CD. Something. Something. But they said his brain was the worst case that they had ever seen. And they didn't even recently start. They just recently started testing a lot of these football players' mm -hmm. brains, basically because a lot of them kept doing like erratic, showing erratic Committed behavior, suicide. suicide. And, um, yeah. What was the one guy who? I don't know if he broke. I don't think he broke in a store, but he did had some tearing up or busting mm -hmm. out windows in some store. So. And they do strange things for people who are, you know, get money and and success. But they can't help it because th their brain is not working it's properly. It's called CTE, CTE, chronic traumatic encephalopathy. Let's see, encephalopathy. Mm -hmm. Encephalopathy is a degenerative brain disease found in athletes, military veterans, and others with the history of repetitive brain trauma. Yep, so it's like, you know, and... Wow. And that starts, you know, probably in Little League. Yeah. You know, those boys be taking that impact, you know, from Little League football they all do. through high school, mm -hmm. you know. That's really, really sad. I think that is. Uh, I but think, I, I like looking at the guys in the uh, football uniform pants. I like looking at them. In the what is this that Kilo Parker is saying on the feed? Let me what see. Is, oh, Lord. Uh, these. Oh, wow. The chat just disappeared. It went away? <laughs> what the hell? I don't know, Glenn. What you doing over there? I, it's crazy. I, oh, I see it all just went down. It crashed. I mean, we're not off the air, but see. I'm excited to, um, are you excited to see the halftime show tomorrow? I'm excited oh, yeah, to forget. see, I'm excited to see J-Lo. She probably going to give it to him. After I, did you see the movie Hustlers? I know it's old, but oh, I found it. says that Will Smith played the African doctor who discovered that disease, that diagnosis, that disease. Really? In what movie? What movie was that, Kilo? Why he didn't call in? Yeah, why you didn't just call I in? I call in call on in. your show. Yeah, she calls in on your show. <laughs> oh, I, di I didn't know that. It wasn't the, that wasn't, uh. I don't know. Glenn, you ever been to a Super Bowl? Yes. Did you have fun? It's, uh, to me, it's more fun uh, up, up until the game. The game. You, you know what I mean? <laughs> and then yeah. the after parties. I mean, I mean, it was a good experience to, to, you know, be able to say, yeah, I've done it. Right. But it's all about couple of days before and a couple of days after 
Yeah. <laughs> I think for anything, uh, the party, the people you see, the people you, you know, I've never been to a Super Bowl. I, actually, I've never even been to a football, like a Lions game or anything like that. Well, if you, ain't been, if you haven't been to a Lions game, you haven't missed nothing. I haven't. No. People make it seem like I'm really missing something. I heard what? tailgating was funner than actually going to yes. the game. Yes. I never been tailgating before either. <laughs> Cause it'd be too cold. I'm not going outside. I'm not standing in the cold for nobody. I don't want to park. I don't want to walk. So if I'm not going inside, I guess I just probably won't ever make it to a football game. That's how it's wow. going down. And also, ladies and gentlemen, don't forget that I am also the owner of Pure Essence Resale Boutique. So if you want to get a style consultation, of course, you can reach out to me on my email at it's info at pureessenceresale.com. Of course, Instagram is pure underscore essence underscore resale and Facebook pure dot essence dot resale. So, of course, I always love and can show you how to mix um, retail items of, um, and coordinate with resale items. You don't always have to get everything from one shop, one store. You can buy from several different places to complete your styled outfit. You want to dress based on your personality and how you feel. You don't want to always find outfits or put things on or purchase things based on what someone else likes. You're never going to be comfortable in nothing that you don't feel comfortable in. It can look good, but are you comfortable? So think about that. Kilo says the name of that movie is called Concussion. Concussion? Yeah. I've never I, seen it. I've seen it. It's a very good movie. Okay. I'll, I'm a, I'm a, I'll check that out. Yeah, you should check that out. I will. I just, I really felt bad you know after hearing the doctor i didn't see all of it but the parts that i saw it's just like we take children and their thoughts and their needs for granted and by me having a child i could as a parent i'm just i just try to figure out like where's the disconnect how some parents have a disconnect with their children you know what i mean yes and i i just can't imagine how he felt when his mom started you know dating her cousin's boy ex-husband or something like that like that's traumatizing like three months after his dad passed away yeah and moved him in the house like, but you know in, in watching the movie what i took from the documentary excuse me is that this guy was actually homosexual but didn't realize it yeah probably because he had no one to talk to Think about it. If his when his dad passed away, I think his dad might have been more instrumental in his life, maybe than his mom. But maybe his he knew he couldn't open up. Yeah, you know, what I'm saying? You know they, that could be a problem too because they say, you know, and I'm I'm going to emphasize they say mm -hmm. that his dad was a tyrant, and often uh, let's take this call. Caller, you're on. Hi. Hi. How are you? This is your cousin. <laughs> Hi, cousin Helen. How are you today? Cousin Helen. I'm doing good. Listen, I love your hair. <laughs> Do you? Thank you. I, I, I love the photographer Hi, over there. Oh, the engineer. Mm -hmm. Mr. Cannon. Uh -huh. I'm coming to his shop. Well, thank you. I, I love the show. Over there, the wow. Well, thanks so some, much for tuning in. Love. And, my, and giving me positive feedback. I love y'all. I love y'all. <laughs> we love you too. We love you and thank you for calling. <laughs> all right, that's all I'm going to say for right now. Okay. Okay, what time you come to get your car washed? Uh, if not, it's gonna, it might have to be through the week. Okay. Glenn is usually okay. there. Tell, tell Glenn I'm going to be there. No problem. Don't, don't matter what time I come, but tell him I'm going to look for him. Okay. Oh, you going to know her when she pull up. Okay. <laughs> All right, darling. I love y'all. Love, okay. love you, too. Love you, too. Bye-bye. Stay positive. We will. You're going to be looking for you. You're going to know her when she pull up. Call. You gonna You going to know her when she pull up. She's going to be full of energy and smiling. Okay. So... 
Are we gonna tell the people about the book? <laughs> Oh, are we, we are we, we afraid to talk about no the i'm not not at all okay so for people who don't know me all the way i'm gonna reintroduce myself i'm asnita norman i am a resale bo boutique owner a radio show host and i am also an uh, entrepreneur author. you are author. author i'm sorry that's what i meant to come. i don't know how entrepreneur came Damn, up girl. i'm an author don't curse i'm an author and I am the author of Entrepreneurship, My Story, Your Guide, which is a journey in entrepreneurship. So it, um, of course, goes a little bit over about over my life, about who I am and what I've experienced as it relates to resale and how I can give you advice on opening a resale boutique. Um, it's something that I enjoy, something that I love. I love for people to just do what it is that you want to do. I just always inspire people by saying there's no right or wrong time to just do it. You never know the wrong time. Sometimes is the right time because you never know who you can meet, um, who can assist you with taking you and your business to the next level. So every chance is a great chance. Take it day by day, but never give up. So that's what mom, the book talks about. And it's a um, few other stories in here about women who started their journey in entrepreneurship. And you can also purchase the book um, on my website, which is pure, pureessenceresale.com. This camera over here. But this is my book. It's also available on Amazon um, in the soft uh, paperback and also digital. So you can get it on Amazon or you can uh, purchase it directly from my website for Pure Essence. Show the people on this side. Oh, I'm sorry. Pureessenceresale.com. So does that still look like me? It does. It's a beautiful picture of you. Thank you. You know, I, you know I've never seen you with that kind of top on up, <laughs> up under there. But see how I got it covered though? It worked. I don't know. That's a little, that's kind of hot. You know, and a funny thing, when I took this picture, and shout out to Image84, I call him my photographer. His name is Michael because we started together. And Give him a plug. Oh, okay. Michael. Michael Armstrong is um, owner of Image84. Um, on Instagram, he is Image underscore, I think, I mean, Image84 underscore Michael. But he's Michael Armstrong, and he does videography, photography. Um, what else uh, is it called? But anyway, he's a photographer, videographer. Follow him. Reach out to him. He'll take care of you. Reliable. And he's also dependable. Yeah. Yeah, but um, I was having such a rough day when I took this photo. And every time I look at the picture and everybody tell me it's a nice picture, I probably literally was crying probably about 20 minutes before I took the photo. I did because I had so much going on. My dad was sick. He was in the hospital. And you know how you just run behind schedule and it seemed like everything not working out. My makeup, I didn't, you know, I didn't, wasn't pleased with having to do my own makeup. But, you know, it all just turned out just the way it was supposed to turn out. So, every time I look at it, it just inspires me to keep moving and never give up. Give up. Never give up. And again, youressenceresale.com is where you can purchase the book. And right now I have it um, listed on sale for $10. So, yeah. you think that's how you're going to sell it? You think that's how I'm going to sell it? I might have to put them in my back, in my trunk. So what about the people who may be watching who want to buy the book right now? I do have a few of them with Okay. I do have a couple so, copies. Let me you. sell this book for this girl. She don't know <laughs> what the hell she's doing. Glenn, don't say I don't know what I'm doing. Just say I'm not doing it Glenn's way. Whatever. <laughs> if you're interested in a copy of the book and you're viewing the show right now, you can call the station, 248-429-7224, and we'll get the book for you and hold it and uh you can cash out the money and you have a cash out my cash up is my name asnita norman so that is the dollar sign o-s-n-i-t-a last name norman n-o-r-m-a-n -N. Okay. okay so you can get this book you can support this book and it's what it's only ten dollars yep, right it's ten dollars for right now yeah and, it, and it's really it's really really a good read i sometimes of course being an entrepreneur you are never 
overly motivated all the time so i read it for inspiration because a lot of there's a several other authors in the book that has done tremendous things since we did the books and this was like two years ago. why don't you read a passage from your favorite one of your favorite passages one of my favorite um passages let's see okay i just opened up one it says why did i become an entrepreneur why did i decide to become an entrepreneur i got tired of working for the man such a cliche line but it's true one of my favorite quotes is by madeline albright there is plenty of room in the world for mediocre men there is no room for mediocre women she is right mediocre men are everywhere just drive through downtown dallas around lunchtime and you will see them all jollying out to lunch with the boys you won't see very many women the women are all inside working through their lunch breaks having a snack bar or protein drink at their desk, hoping to show how dedicated they are to their work and their company while their bosses all head out to lunch. As far as we have come, ladies, we have so much further to go. Yep. So that was my passage. But yeah, I'm telling you, these are some awesome, awesome stories. And hopefully, discussing a book i think i will reach out to a few of some of the ladies to see if they could um call in and we can talk well i'll tell you what i'm going to purchase a book and the first person that calls before we get off the air and you only got a couple minutes oh uh, we got like five minutes we got five minutes first person to call will win a copy of osnita's book okay yeah, from uh the event radio network that's how we do it we try to support each other that's right you can't make it to nowhere with no support that's right and, and i mean like especially when it comes to um supporting your own you know yes. people will always i was just telling glenn uh, reaching out to people to ask for sponsorship or you know you want to you know how you can help me help you or help someone else oh we got a caller caller Hello? Caller, you on the line? I would like the book. <laughs> <laughs> this, okay. This sounds like a family member. Y'all cheating. This is a family member. Yep. I, my name is Helen. Ineligible. <laughs> no, no, no. No, no, no. I can't be ineligible because you just said the, the next first caller. person that called. Uh, and you didn't say yeah. anything. You didn't specify anything else. I'm a state employee. Used to be retired. <laughs> so, now she come on now. Rank on you. Now she's gonna bring my book. She's gonna bring the law into it she now. She's gonna bring mm -hmm. it. So yes, that's right. Give, you, me the, give me my book. Okay, you are the winner. Thank you, Jesus. Okay, when do I need to get my book? Uh, can you bring it to the? Uh, see, it's snowing now. I need. I need my book. Okay. We, I'll reach out to you and we'll connect and I'll get you your book. You I are. appreciate it. Thank you so much, Glenn. Thank you. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye-bye. <laughs> hey, she was listening. Yeah. You never know who who hand the book can get in and where it can go. Exactly. And, and I, that's I, what people, you know, as people who are authors and uh, magazine owners, publishers, mm -hmm. that's what, you know, I learned that when I had uh, a magazine called Spotlight Magazine. Okay. And it was a free publication. But that book would end up everywhere. Someone would read it, set it down on someone's coffee table. Mm -hmm. That pe te person picks it up, gets on a flight with it, reads it on the plane, leaves it in, in the slot on the airplane, and somebody else grabs it. You know. So you had a magazine, Glenn? Mm hmm. Yeah, Spotlight what Magazine. What haven't you done? In terms of entertainment? In terms of entertainment. Mm. A lot. A lot that you haven't, but it's a lot that you have. Yes. Magazine. Mm. That's interesting. And and the magazine was doing very well. Um, the reason that, that we stopped publishing is because the internet exploded the way that it did. Mm -hmm. it, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And... Uh, to manufacture the magazine was not uh, cost effective anymore because people started, you know, reading their magazines online. And, you know, by it being a free publication, mm -hmm. you know, we couldn't sustain it. 
That's yeah. interesting. Hmm? But yeah, I got a um, I got a lot of uh, creative or a lot of different ideas. That I want. Get them out of you, baby. Get them out of you. Give them to the world. Give them to the world. It takes a lot of time. And it does. Also, I don't. I don't mind the dedication though. Like anything that I put my mind to, or you know, think that I can do, I do it, and I do it to the best of my ability. I try, you know, not to half step. I'm either it's all or nothing. You know? hmm. It's all or nothing with me. I'm. You're not gonna unless I'm working on something. You're not gonna hear me talk about it. Un unless I'm trying to say, Glenn, hey, this is what I came up with. What do you think about this? Or how right. can I fix? I'm going to come to you with something. I'm just not about to be talking off. You know, some people like I'm working on this and working on that. I'm be the and you going. So when is it? Did you start? Oh, no, I ain't wrote nothing down. Well, did you know I ain't called no people? Then I don't want to hear that. I want to see some uh, some uh, something that's showing that you're working on it, that right. you're trying to get to the next level. So that's where your time management, your discipline, and your consistency, which right. I know we all struggle with it every day, but it's nothing like fulfilling a dream and accomplishing a mission. Absolutely. That's it. Well put, sweetheart. All right. So that's going to end our fashion, flair, and lifestyle today. And again, we um, if you are interested in coming on the show and doing an interview, um, if you're interested in sponsoring a commercial, TV ad, anything, Reach out to me, of course. Um, Instagram, I'm on. I'm fashion underscore flair underscore lifestyle, and then also you can reach me through my Pure Essence platform as well. And Bit Radio is everywhere. Absolutely, yeah. Contact us if you want to advertise your business or service over the network or on the fashion flair and lifestyle show it doesn't matter you can hit us up our business number is 218-506-8368 we would love to uh structure a business plan to help you grow your business and not break the bank yes all right marketing is key yes <laughs> Okay, Nita, another great show, another one in the Thank can, you. baby. And we gave away a book. And we gave away a book to Grandma. So that's my cousin, Glenn. You gonna know her when you meet her. That's oh, all yeah. I'm gonna say. Now, you ain't gonna even. You're not gonna even have to wonder who she is. Right. When she step up on you, she comes. Give me my book. <laughs> no, she gonna be like Glenn, and you gonna be like. That's I that lady. To you. Uh huh. <laughs> Oh, tonight, Lucky's, y'all. Vent Radio takes over Lucky Strikes in Novi. As we do every Saturday, we call it Soulful Saturday. So get in your car if you, you want to come out and have a good time and meet some nice people and a great environment. I mean, the club is beautiful. So if you got a little time tonight, that's where we'll be. Vent Radio and it's Soulful Saturdays at No Buy Lucky Strikes, okay? So be playing soulful music. Oh, uh, yeah. Well, Wax Tax and Dre is our DJ. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. And uh, he plays it all. He, he plays did. to his I audience. Was, I was listening to one of his old mix uh, CDs on uh, YouTube a couple weeks ago mm -hmm. when I called myself Exercise. So if you want to catch up with us tonight, that's where we'll be, all right? Peace. Peace out. Go. Glenn, that's what I need to know.